03456060973 is the number to call. I'm joined by Frederica Roberts, who's a happiness and resilience specialist who works in schools and also a former secondary teacher. So she's really qualified to talk about this. Frederica, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Stig. How are you? I'm also well. So one in six pupils are unhappy. Are you surprised by that? I'm not surprised. And actually, I, 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 well, in a way, I am surprised that it's only one in six. Yeah. Because my experience, certainly, of working in schools, the feedback that we get from teachers about the need for mental health support for the work that I do with my colleagues in terms of boosting children's resilience and happiness and the, the devastating statistics that we keep reading about suicide rates in children and teenagers are horrifying. So actually one in six is lower than I would have expected it to be, but it's still too high. Um, and so do you think, let's, let's talk about the, the exam, notion of exam stress. Do you think that we have too much of a pressure on our children to perform in exams? I think so, and I think the, the problem with that is, and, and you've touched on a lot of that in your introduction, that we test them too early and too much. Um, so, you know, Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox was um, quoted the other day as saying we shouldn't be using children as a measuring stick for school's performance. Yeah. And there is no evidence, actually, to support that testing improves children's learning. So why are we testing them? Uh, why are we testing them at such an early age? It's not helping them learn, it's just helping them pass tests. And actually it's adding to their stress from an increasingly early age. The fact that I do most of my work um, in primary schools is actually down to the fact that primary schools are saying to us, children are under so much pressure, especially when they come up to their SATs, they just don't know how to cope and they need the help. And that's a very sad state of affairs. And, and you've mentioned Finland. You know, children in Finland, for example, they don't just don't get tested at all for the first few years of their education, but they also start school later. They, they don't do. start school until they're seven. So they have time to learn to be children, to socialize, to play. And all of that, to, to lay the foundations to, to having those relationships and a foundation to actually have a support network when they do have problems. Uh, Whereas uh, we throw them in at the age of four and five and they don't have time to, to learn how to play and socialise and interact with other children and ask for help and all of those things. But I'm struck by, by the fact that my daughter's eight now and so she's gone through the first set of SATs um, yeah. and she barely noticed she was doing it. So I just wonder whether some schools ramp it up and make it feel like this hugely pressured thing. I think talking to her, she didn't really know she was being tested. And I think when it's done well, if, if it has to be done, which I still don't think it should, yeah. but I think when it, if it has to be done, then that is the way to do it, because really they should just not almost realise that it's happening at that age. And unfortunately, um, and I, I don't want to blame teachers and schools because they are under enormous pressure um, and they're measured on all the wrong things, but because of the way that schools are measured, because ultimately they have to compete for funding in order to actually be able to keep delivering and to be able to keep going and keep teaching our children, they have to play the game on the measurement. And some schools, therefore, are, are placing some of that pressure back onto the children, unwillingly, I'm sure, but that, you know, it filters down. And that, that is one of the problems with the way that the testing system works. At it, such it, it's very striking if you look at countries like Singapore or Finland or Japan who have their own problems with their education, but they recognise that... Uh, up until 15, 16, you've got no idea how clever a child is, how well yeah. they're going to do. And so they don't stream any of those countries until 15, 16, where you then say, do you want to go and go towards an academic type of discipline or do you want to go to a vocational type of discipline? We in this country have got locked into this notion, haven't we, that at seven we know what the future holds for kids, or 11 even, and that doesn't seem yeah. to be true. No, and, and also when you think about how early children are making, having to make decisions about their GCSE choices, with a lot of schools now actually, although the GCSE years are typically years 10 and 11 when they're 14 and 15, that actually a lot of schools are now starting the GCSE curriculum in year 9, so even a year earlier. So children are making very big decisions at a very early age as well. And that's a pressure because, you know, not everybody knows what they want to do when they grow up. I mean, I'm, I'm 45 and I still don't quite know what I want to do. Same with me, yeah, I agree. It's changing. <laughs> so 
I think that's part of the problem as well. You know, we, we are streaming them by ability, but we're also streaming them in terms of forcing them to make big life choices very, very early on that are going to impact on what they can then study later on. You were a teacher, um, Freddie. We don't have to leave it yeah. on this question, but um, we don't... Teachers should be regarded by society as important as doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not in this country, are they? They're not, and I think, um, not to keep banging on about the testing, but actually that is a symptom of us not regarding teachers in the way that they're supposed to be. Because if you regard teachers, if you give them the right training, the right support, and the right recognition, then you understand and accept that teachers are the best placed people through teaching and interacting with the children to know how well their children are doing and to be able to give them the support that they need in areas where they need additional support, as opposed to just saying, well, we don't trust you as teachers, as a profession, yeah. to actually be able to make these decisions and these differentiations. Therefore, we're just going to test all the children and, and use that as a stick to beat you with. So, no, there isn't the respect that there should be for teachers. And that has an effect. Frederica Roberts, thank you very much indeed. Happiness and resilience specialist who works in schools. Yeah. She used to be a sec secondary teacher as well.